Hi everyone, welcome back to API Days Live India. This is Thiraj Nayal, Global Community Ambassador at DevOps Institute, and I will be your host and MC for this segment at the technical stage, where our theme is connected applications and products. So we have curated a fantastic lineup of speakers from various industry, which will come across and share tremendous insights. So first up on stage, we have uh, three musketeers. I would like to call them. Uh, because we have Yamini Lakshmipati, Associate Engineering Manager, Shankar Babu, Senior Software Development Engineer, and Nitin K, Staff Engineer at Four Kites. And they will be delivering a fantastic session with uh, as respect to the topic, digital, digitalizing the supply chains with APIs. And I think it's one of the most interesting topics uh, based on the current situation and based on how we are moving ahead in the digital era. So once again, uh, a very warm welcome to Yamini, Shankar, and Nitin. Uh, we are glad to have you here as part of the speaking lineup. Thanks. So I can see the slides. Everything is working fine. The stage is yours. All right, cool. Thanks, Zeroj. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Yamini Lakshmipati, working for Foka as an engineering manager. Currently focusing on scaling systems, people, processes, and organizations. And uh, I have uh, Shankar and Nitin joining here with me uh, to share their experience along with me in Forecast's journey of uh, envisioning APIs. All right. Uh, and the way we are planning to lay this talk uh, is in three parts, right? So we would want to provide a brief introduction about Forecast. Uh, just to space a little bit on the different kind of things we do and um, uh, and sort of emphasize on why uh, APIs, uh, API first approach or self-service model is important for us. And then touch base a bit on our API's journey. And uh, we will have Shankar uh, walk us through our very own organic uh, four kites developer portal. Uh, and with Nitin covering us, uh, or possibly, you know, like just indicating highlights on some of the best practices that we have learned along the way. All right, and that's uh, the agenda for today's session. And on that note, let's get started. Maybe if you can move on to the next slide. Who are we, right? So, Four Kites is uh, primarily uh, one of the world's largest predictive supply chain visibility platform. And as we speak, we are talking in over 55 plus countries. Primarily, uh, we are into Americas. We have our presence established in Europe and APAC as well, though we are trying to grow our footprint there. And I would like to definitely mention that Forkites has uh, very recently been uh, named as a leader in Gartner's Magic Quadrant for supply chain real-time transportation visibility platform. Supply chain has got to be a complex landscape, right? So it indeed is a trillion dollar industry. And the very moment I say supply chain, there are going to be a lot of inherent enterprise operations. And there are going to be a lot of different systems, right? So uh, the likes of transportation management systems, warehouse management systems, different legacy systems that, that our customers would have built in the past. And different personas across each of these verticals as well, right? So. Uh, the primary problem here is these different uh, systems and personas are today operating in silos. And that's exactly where uh, Four Kites uh, has a role to play, right? So, so we as a supply chain visibility provider, uh, since we sit at the top, we have uh, the ability to integrate all of these systems, to so integrate or ag rather aggregate all of these data points and being able to run our own proprietary algorithms and top of that, that way, you know, like, uh, providing prescriptive or rather actionable insights to our customers that can essentially help them, you know, optimize their own supply chain operations. And that's how we indeed add value to our customers as we stand today. And uh, that's essentially, you know, like our uh, primary USP, so to speak. Uh, and Shakur, if you can move to the next slide. So this uh, infographic like, just sort of summarizes uh, the primary offerings that we do here on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So as you can see at the bottom, we have our core visibility platform. 
So like I said before, supply chain deals with a lot of personas and systems, right? So having the ability to ingest all of this data, having the ability to run enterprise grade or other comprehensive pipelines and comprehensive algorithms on top of these data points to generate organic intelligence and give them back to our customers, right? So not just that, but having the ability to interface with external data points all the way, you know, like just adding more and more value to our customers uh, was and will be our core. And that exactly constitutes the foundational part of uh, four guides, right? So that being the predictive visibility platform. And if you look at the second uh, block, right? So it essentially talks about all sorts of rather the gamut of modes that we covered today, right? So from uh, over the road to air, to rail, to ocean, to maybe even drones in future. How do we uh, achieve all of this? Uh, I would rather say, you know, like it's all possible primarily because of, uh, you know, us sitting at the top of all of these systems, right? So, so as we sit at the top, we have the ability to create this network effect as well. I can come to that part a little bit later though, but then I do want to emphasize the fact that uh, the bunch of customers that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis with four kites uh, interfacing these customers, we do help them create the network effect. We do help them connect with each other, collaborate more with each other, thus being able to help them realize more and more value as we keep uh, progressing you know, in this journey. And again, at the top, we do have our own data science teams, essentially you know, generating organic intelligence for us, which we can definitely package as business research and have them offered as APIs too, right? So, uh, and while you predominantly look at the kind of value that we had, right? So essentially, uh, this is more around the lines of uh, us being in a position to report on the career performance, us being in a position to generate actionable insights with which essentially we can actually let our customers reduce uh, the amount of dollar dollars that they would have to otherwise pay, right? So, so to speak in supply chain terms, the detention costs, the demerge costs, all of this can actually be controlled and optimized if, if four guides can provide these type of actionable insights to our customer. And uh, while it comes to the uh, uh, lateral offering side of things, we do have other products, the, the likes of appointment manager, you know, the likes of uh, different applications that we have to make sure user experience with our customers are, uh, you know, like sort of really seamless. And uh, uh, let me just check if there's a question for me. Okay, so that's uh, that's generic chat. Uh, sorry, got distracted with that. Yeah, so uh, all I was saying that is we do have like a lot of horizontal offerings as well, and our recent foray into the yard management space as well is definitely going to it indeed already added value, but it's going to add more value uh, to the whole of the supply chain back, uh, landscape, uh, thereby to our very own customers, right? So. Shankar, if you can please move to the next slide. This essentially, you know, like just sort of uh, uh, a quick sampling of our customers, right? So as you can rightly see, uh, they do uh, belong to like different categories, like from FMCG to medicine, to automobiles, to construction, and the different kind of features that you can see here, right? So all of this uh, has been built along with our customers, right? So all the way Till air tracking, you know, starting from predictive ATS to up until air tracking, all majority of the features that we have released so far, uh, I would say it's uh, it's our joint effort with our customers and the kind of innovation that Forecast has been into all these days. Uh, we are like sort of uh, super grateful to our customers for helping us uh, do all of what we're doing today, right? Uh, and if, of course, you know, there are a couple of interesting features that can actually resonate a lot with. Uh, you know, a different segment of supply chain, for example, coal supply chain temperature tracking is something that they can closely resonate with. And if you would want to, if they would want to explicitly have the shows that they would want to enforce on, uh, we have an offering which can essentially tell our customers on whether or not the threshold has already been breached. And uh, all that I'm trying to convey uh, through this is, uh, you know, this space, right? So providing visibility into anything and everything that's happening on the supply chain is extremely crucial. And especially, you know, like in the last one year where, uh, you know, we were dealing with a lot of COVID scenarios, right? So supply chain visibility has become an important topic, a crucial topic, and the majority of the digital transformation leaders at various enterprises are already uh, looking into this. 
And Shankar, if you can move to the next slide. Uh, the very reason when I wanted to state all of this is essentially because uh, all of this can happen, right? So not just in forecasts for any organization. Uh, the very moment, you know, like we start thinking more about uh, adopting an API first approach or uh, giving a lot of importance to self-service models, right? So essentially, you know, like if you look at the forecasts API journey, at least from my point of view, uh, every single organization for that matter, not just for forecasts, would have to think through different strategies, right? So, uh, you know, starting from APIs to technically provisioning them to the business aspects of it and to making sure operationally, you know, like they are working as expected. These four pillars are essentially primary, uh, not just for forecasts, but for any organization who would want to package their APIs uh, uh, package, rather they are organic asserts as APIs and offer them as products, right? So essentially, if you look at the technical part of it, right? So once you have the producers and the consumers identified, how are you going to provision it, whether or not you need a gateway? And I'm sure the majority of us would agree that there is definitely a need for the gateway. And whether or not you want to offload majority of your concerns to the gateway layer. And then, you know, how would you have a self-servicing portal with all sorts of documentation baked in? helping your clients to, you know, like just pick up the exact piece of code that would help them integrate with our APS real quick. Uh, all I'm saying is essentially we will have to focus a lot on, you know, like majority of these pillars while having our uh, product counterparts look at the usage patterns, look at, you know, like how can we actually package all of these asserts and carve out multiple tiers while making sure, you know, the operational aspects of it, you know, like be it uh, the adopt agreed upon SLAs or making sure you know you can scale uh, how many ever you know calls that you would want to handle you have the ability to scale making sure your performance is good thinking on these broad pillars and making sure you know like you have your uh, you have your strategy start out for each of these pillars is uh, extremely crucial and uh, this indeed is something that forecast has actually gone through in the past if i would have to say because we do have our own self service provision self-servicing uh, developer portal at the moment and uh, our our team did go through all of these process and and we did you know like just sort of size and dice all of these and uh, which is essentially you know like why we are here to share our learnings so i would like to essentially you know like uh, pause there and hand this off to shankar so he can talk through and show us uh, the self-servicing api portal that we have but I'd definitely also like to thank all the other teams and individual contributors back at 4K for helping, you know, like uh, us uh, in terms of realizing value through APIs as it stands today. Over to you, Shankar. So thanks, Yami, for giving such a wonderful introduction about 4 types. So, like, so let me uh, start our journey on uh, developer portal. So, like, when did we think about developer portal? Like. When we start designing the uh, API gateway, so at the time itself, we started thinking about developer portal because the API gateway wouldn't complete without having the developer portal. So, and uh, we, we we go through the pain point that we are currently facing uh, in the business side with respect to handing out and uh, handing over the API documentation with the clients. So we keep that in mind and we started having uh, the thought have to have the self-service developer portal. So let me tell about the, what is developer portal first. So it is nothing but a, a common uh, place where uh, the producer uh, of the APIs will publish their APIs and the consumers who, like in our case, typically the clients or the customers, so who wants to integrate their system with ours. So they will uh, need a proper documentation. Uh, so it is going to be a common place where both will meet together. So technically, like it is, a, it is going to be a, a website. Like it is usually a static website. So where the producer will uh, put up the documentation, which contains all those technical as well as non-technical details. And some people would think about like, oh, why can't we like having a Swagger uh, UA alone uh, will be enough for having the uh, exposing those APIs right? Uh, so it is not up to the Swagger UI. So we do have a lot of features that we are going to cover it in the later part. So like adding those features will make you more, more robust and then will make your integration more easier than simply having those uh, Swagger spec, which is only understandable by the technical persons. So here, like we do have the business folks who involves in the uh, integrations. So like having those technical documentation as well will make a big impact and will ease the process. 
so that's all about the developer portal uh, overall so let me move on to the uh, the reason like why do we need a developer portal right so like whenever we uh, a customer or uh, the consumer of the apis reach out the uh, uh, client or in this case like our uh, our organization so we usually need to uh, get in touch with the engineering to team to get the list of api that we currently expose and uh, look at the payloads so all those stuff like the uh, business analyst or the business folks will not understand they will simply get those details from the engineering team and then hand it over to the uh, customers and even the customers also will in turn hand it over to the developer uh, uh, development team in their uh, use case right so like this typically will take nearly 10 to 14 days like uh, getting the right uh, uh, structure and getting all those credentials to get integrated and start flowing the uh, traffic between the uh, consumer and the producer so if we have a developer portal where we standard where we clearly explain like what are the apis that we are currently exposing to the customers and how what is the format of the response and what what, what is the format of the request and how could they access those apis using the credentials so if we have a proper documentation along with the business value like the reason for the reason behind the api and which api will suit for uh, the customer's use case so all those business uh, uh, context as well will be exposed in the developer portal so that uh, anyone from the uh, customer side they can easily go through the documentation in the developer portal and they can easily find out like uh, how to integrate with them uh, in the easiest way so it will reduce the entire time taken earlier it was like uh, nearly 10 to 14 years to integrate the uh, uh, the application apis into the customer's uh, system and uh, that will ease the entire process and not only having a developer portal so if we have a api suit so that we can group the apis uh, based on their relevance and we can create a package or kind of uh, uh, suit we can and we can deliver that to the customers which will easily identify them like okay i need uh, the apis which comes under this bracket or this package so that uh, they can easily onboard them uh, into our uh, uh, application and they can start streaming or st start getting the data that we currently expose and it will do the less operational cost as well the third thing is it should be a self serviceable api portal so so even though we have the developer portal uh, that should be an authentication mechanism through which uh, the uh, customers will start interacting with our apis right now so if they have the power to generate those api keys or the credentials on their own which will even make the customer experience better and better and which will give the transparency and which will improve the trust on ourselves right so the entire process is automated so the customer they can themselves create the keys and they can start looking at the documentation for their APIs to be integrated, and they can start subscribing the packages or the bundles that they want to use it, and they can go ahead with a less amount of time for the integration. And the fourth point is like obviously, like they don't need to rely on any other services or maybe email communication or any other stuff. They can simply stick with the developer portal that we expose. So it will even make Portage City even more. So that is the need for the developer portal. So with that, I will uh, move on to like, how did we evaluate the product and how did we choose the developer portal? So as I told earlier, so when we talked about the API gateway, at that time itself, we started thinking about the self-serviceable developer portal. The evaluation criteria is very simple because it is going to be a static or maybe most likely it is going to be a static uh, website so we started comparing different products available in the market and it is purely based on the number of features that it is going to give so we listed down the features that we currently expect that suits well to our organization and we gave them the priority as well so we listed the features and we gave them the priority and we compared different like nearly six to seven products available in the market and we cho have chosen like which is more suiting to uh, the features that we are requesting it. So let me go over the features that we expected one by one. So the first one is like the open source. So the reason that we uh, 
we were expecting open sources like so we have the ability to write our own uh, thesis or the uh, plugins that we expected uh, if, if it is going to uh, if it is going to really needed for our organization so uh, so as part of uh, their uh, own uh, product so they may be having a number of features so for uh, our purpose say suppose if you want to implement a new uh, uh, maybe a new uh, feature on top of the existing one so if we have the ability to do that so that will make our uh, process more easier and that will make a unique uh, uh, brand in the uh, customer uh, base as well so we we are looking for open source uh, which can be uh, modified by ourselves and the second feature that we are looking at is the self poster the reason is like uh, if we have control over the posting so uh, we can like scale based on our need and we can even have it uh, self poster rather than having it on prem or uh, giving uh, i mean uh, giving it a paid one so we prefer to have it self poster and the next feature that we consider is having the sign in process so are we going to expose this entire developer portal to the public or are we going to expose the developer portal to only the clients that we currently have in our application so that process like decided which way we need to go so even if we go like for public or for internal we should definitely need a authentication mechanism so that uh, only authenticated users can go and look at the documentation so for that like we even further go on the research of like does the developer portal support the custom authentication because our internal customers are already having the credentials to log in into our application so we try to like to not overburden their uh, process so we try to give them the access to the developer portal with the existing credentials so that is also one of the main criteria that we were looking when we were trying to evaluate the developer portal and the next important thing is like the languages support so it helps in uh, uh, i mean it helps really to the developer who tries to integrate with the apis because like most of the organization will follow some uh, languages in their application to integrate with us so it may be java or it may be a ruby or it may be a go or it may be node js whatever it is so we want to expose the built in like uh, the ready made code is snippet in our developer portal so that the customers or the de developers in the customer side they can easily pick up that code and integrate with their application so instead of even not even looking for the code source in the uh, outside so they can even simply pick the uh, or copy the snippet that we that we are currently sharing in the developer portal they can start using that in their application so which will make their process even easier so we were expecting like the developer portal must have language syntax support and language support like when we uh, give the uh, snippet so it should clearly uh, support the uh, syntax as well so uh, like we were looking at the uh, developer portal which support like more number of languages and the next one is like the ui customization so some of the uh, clients might think like it is going to be nice to have feature so some if you if you are going to implement this one like it will make more customer happy so when the clients log in into their uh, developer portal version if they want to customize the entire theme so if we give that feature as well then the, the then the client will be more happy to access the developer portal in his own convenient way so we were also looking at the possibility of having the multiple themes and choosing them to uh, choosing them based on their need so that is also one of the important feature that we were considering it and the next one is like importing the open api specification so it is with respect to building the entire developer portal uh, documentation say suppose if we have n number of microservices in our application and if you want to add those uh, apis into the documentation so how much you are going to put so if we have a swagger specification for those apis i think if they support it if the developer portal support that like if we give these swagger spec and it can, it can easily convert that into a documentation then the job is very easy right so we were also looking for the developer portal which will support creating the documentation out of the swagger spec or the open open api spec so that is Shankar, 
Yeah. Or, Can we show the bundles and the best practice as well as we have one last one moment? Yeah, Ramya. Yeah. So the next few things are like uh, looking at searching the APIs in the documentation, which will make the uh, customer job easy and look at the pricing as well. So let me go over the uh, four kids uh, self service portal that we have developed. So this is a sign in page where we can our uh, the four kids customers can put in the login credentials that they currently use for the application and they can log in into that. So like these are the API bundles. So usually like we create a uh, bundles or the packages that the customers can choose in order to access them. So we create the API bundles into like few different categories. So some of the categories are like order visibility, which is nothing but like purchase order uh, later APIs will be coupled together and will be packaged under order visibility. And we do have the real time platform visibility packages where the shipments that they track it. So they have the access to create, update and delete those shipments details. And of course they can even get those details. So those APIs will be clubbed under some packages and we give the list of packages in the self service portal. They can choose those packages and create the API key. Yeah, um, so coming to the point here, right, uh, which uh, Shankar was saying, so all this is kind of summarized here. So have it in multiple languages, have it self-service, have minimum two keys. So you want to like offload as much to your customer, right, to make it as self-service as possible. Also, some of the standards mentioned here are typically what we have seen are like kind of best practices if you want to do it completely self-service where uh, customer takes care of whatever they want to take care. Uh, and uh, especially like monetization is something that uh, has to be absolutely seen, right? Because ultimately we want APS to be used by our customers. So all this kind of uh, summarizes our journey in uh, uh, the simpler best practices. And I hope this is in no way limited, but uh, it kind of gives you some directional input on uh, how many things are going to actually making APS. Thank you guys. Thank you all, and thanks to the rest of the forecast team and individuals as well. Thanks a lot, Yamini, Shankar, and Nitin. I think the presentation was really great, and I am I can imagine the kind of information and the extensive details which you have shared has really benefited all the audience. And sure enough, because of the time limitations, we cannot take uh, questions right now. But of course, we can take the questions in the chat box, which is ongoing. So feel free to engage with the audience. But once again, would like to thank each one of you. Like I said, uh, the three musketeers have really uh, leveled up the overall sessions. So thank you so much. Thank you, Dinesh. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone.